Hi, my name is Shuren. I work in healthcare. My name is Cheryl. Uh, we are married and I work in, in a consulting company. My name is Adi. Um, Adi for short and I've uh, been in Singapore for just over 14 years. I'm an architect by training, but I work in the real estate industry. My name is Neha. I run my own business. It's a dance business called Dance of Tonic. I've been part of Project Lenny since 2019 and now I'm currently head of Wall Street for Project Lenny. I started off as a volunteer uh, in 2019, helping out with donations. I actually did a dance for a cause kind of a program for Project Looney. And then for clustering, um, I heard that they actually needed some admins. So I decided to become you know, one of the admins and then slowly, slowly kind of just made my way out. At that time, it was still like during COVID. We wanted to try something and do something meaningful. And we're quite curious about like also, I guess, having like animal companion. So fostering felt like a good way to kind of welcome that in our lives. It is kind of interesting. And since they're living with you, it feels almost like it's part of your everyday life. And I think it could enhance also our own like living experience, a shared experience as a couple, you know. I wish we had like a huge landed property where, you know, we could dedicate almost one floor to like a, you know, as the kitten room or whatever. But a lot of times here in Singapore, the kitten room currently also doubles up as Adi's study. So, you know, just the idea of like hygiene, cleanliness, um, you know, making sure that, you know, we're scooping out the litter, we're making sure that we're attending to their vet appointments. When you have foster kittens, I feel like, you know, we do have to be home a little bit more than usual. We have to make sure that they're healthy, they're social. So it also depends on like the length of the fostering. So if it's more than one year, so you then you have to do like the minimum, like once a year checkup. But every time there's a new foster, then we would bring her to the vet for like the basic checkup to make sure that she's deeply, she has any other, like, you know, surface, any other injuries or anything that needs to be like taken note of. Yeah, I think Looney is a very graceful organization. In terms of all these medical bills, it's actually put by Looney. What the fosterer does is uh, mostly like the day to day expenses of like food, water, and, you know, painting. So, Looney really it's a great organization whereby they not only put the cat in a foster home but they also pay for those medical bills uh, when it comes in terms of checkups and you know like preventive kind of uh, measures. Fostering is a volunteer opportunity at the end of the day. So um, all medical bills are paid by Project Looney. That's usually the bulk of the cost. So we do work with a couple of partner vets across the island. So as long as a foster goes to those partner vets um, and is and these tests or whatever procedures are approved by the admin, it's covered by Project Willy 100% here. We have like a foster group chat. So all the fosters are all in this WhatsApp chat. We can ask, you know, share experience, share photos. So I think it feels like a very warm, <laughs> welcoming community. And I think the great thing about having this community is also whenever there is like something or an issue for the cat, right? There, you just need to ask and then not only you get advice, but sometimes people might have, okay, I have some medication left on this, it's no longer needed. So then we will just share and everything, right? So it actually saves us a lot of money and waste cut down in totality. Project Lady does have a lot of partnerships with brands that give us like good discounts. So yes, fostering is going to be more expensive than, you know, just having adult cats. But at the end of the day, it is a volunteer opportunity. We're married and we have no children. And to us, like, the cat is, in a way, the closest thing we have to a child at this point in time. <laughs> and just having the sense of accomplishment in, like, nurturing a cat, taking care of it, and seeing how the cat transforms from when they first arrive, they may be scared, and you, know, you don't really know the personality, to suddenly, like, you know, really opening up to us, being with us when we watch TV, or just being like, generally just there with us. I think that that has a very inexplicable, intangible sense of, uh, simplicity and the joy that it brings us and I think that's really the best part. Yeah, it's probably to find the cat of forever home essentially. Mm -hmm. We're knowing that, you know, they weren't in so, I mean, previously very good conditions in terms of that, but to find them and to uh, groom them into a way that, you know, they are, they are familiar and comfortable with humans and eventually finding home for them is something that's really, I mean, worthwhile and it really speaks volume to, you know, how the cat has grown as well. A good foster it has to be patient, right? Everybody's busy, we have a day job, we have a lot of stresses, responsibilities, things to do. And in the midst of that, you have to have the time, effort, energy, um, and, and spend that uh, and invest it in these, in these cats. It, it can be tough after a long day to come and clean a litter sometimes or um, you know, to make sure they're fed or when you have an evening out. 
having the experience of trying to understand like another living being without having an actual means of communication has been itself its own growth journey for me and my husband. Because mm-hmm. we don't always understand what the cat's going to try, but we also kind of try to figure it out. Yet, when we finally develop that bond and trust, it almost feels like, you know what? We are equals now <laughs> with, the, with the cat. And so I think that for fosterers, you potential fosterers, I think, trust it. Like, even when there's difficulties, there's the joys are equally hard. And the advice I would give is that, you know, be open, be ready, embrace the ups and downs. And I think you'll realize that the journey is really so fulfilling. I, I think both are important, right? A lot more people are having cats. So I think both sides of the equation are important. The awareness and the fostering, because that helps us solve, solve the immediate problem, uh, you know, rescuing them when we need to, but also the adoptions, because, you know, the more families that kind of uh, choose to have that as pets, then it, you know, it does help um, keep some of them off the street. We've actually had a lot of adopters um, who have applied to become fosterers. So that's actually really, really nice to see that, you know, they have adopted for Project Libby, but at the same time, they want to show support. Um, and then now they're fosterers for us. It would be anywhere between 30 to 40 foster families um, spread out all across the island. So Project Libby, we don't have a shelter, as you know. So it's just foster families. But again, not everybody is going to be active at the same time. We do encourage um, fosterers to take breaks. Um, just besides being phys- like fostering being physically demanding, it also takes a toll on, you know, it's emotionally exhausting, mentally exhausting as well. So sometimes fosterers are on a break. Sometimes, you know, they may be traveling, they have guests over. Yes, fosterers first. Mm-hmm. And uh, and we have to sometimes let them go. I mean, that's also the magical part because you get to help many cats instead of one mm-hmm. I mean, from that standpoint. You know, and I think we are clear why we are we choose to be fosterers now because we still want to travel quite a bit. We still have enjoyed our time uh, being overseas and that flexibility of it, I don't think it's fair to have a pet that would need that kind of extended and consistent attention. But I think for a, a pet that will be long term, I, I think we're not so ready for that in our lives yet. So it's clear to us that we can do more as fosterers. So I think when it comes to fostering, right, not only does it kind of uh, help um, help Project Looney or enable Project Looney to save uh, and give these cats an interim home just so they get adopted into their forever home. And so interested kind of uh, volunteers can always apply through Project Looney's website. If you want to try fostering and you haven't done it, I would say it just, it's such a rewarding opportunity. Um, you know, it is, it's a great community service to do. And I definitely think that, you know, if, even if you're just like on the fence, just give it a shot, try it once. Even if you have like, you know, a spare room at least, you know, you will basically just be helping out that one kitty who probably thanks you forever. It's just such a such a rewarding thing to do. There's a village of people that are ready to support you, help you. You have an admin. You know, it's just really just about if you could open your home and if you have that time and patience to even just help one adult cat. I mean, you know, Project Uni admins, anyone feel like you know we're more than happy to help and support you through that journey. Yeah.